QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021, Adjusting Entry Depreciation. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars homepage. We currently have the open windows open. You can open the open windows by going to the view dropdown, selecting the open windows list. We're going to be opening up our reports to start off. We're going to go to the reports drop down to do so. Company and financial, open up the balance sheet standard, change the date up top to the cutoff date of 022821. Then we're going to open up our P&L, reports drop down, company and financials, profit and loss, P&L, income statement, changing the dates from 010121 to 022821. So now we're going to be looking at our adjustment. I'm going to go back to the balance sheet for the uh, depreciation. So the depreciation on the property, plant and equipment. We did it last time in our Excel sheet over here. So we have the recording in the Excel sheet and we did so discussing how we would do so and think about the detailed transactions that would then be recorded or possibly with other software such as the uh, tax software that, that could be helped could be used to be doing that calculation so take a look at that presentation just to think about the logistics on how you're going to set up the property planting equipment once set up it should be fairly easy especially if you're working with somebody else that's going to help you to do the depreciation schedules once you work out are you using a tax depreciation schedule, book depreciation schedule, and how exactly are you going to record the transactions? Once you know the transaction to record, then the transaction to record depreciation is straightforward. We simply just debit depreciation expense, credit the accumulated depreciation. On the bookkeeping side, the more difficult thing once you get into QuickBooks, now that we're going to do this journal entry, is to think about how you're going to group the property, plant, and equipment, how you're going to group the depreciation and expense accounts. So you could just list them under fixed assets uh, accounts, but then they, the order will be kind of jumbled. So you could use our sub account categorization as we did, meaning that every category on the, on like the tax depreciation schedule, furniture and fixture, machinery and equipment, you will create a parent account and then two accounts under it, giving you the cost and accumulated depreciation, giving you the capacity then to show the uh the cost and the accumulated depreciation and then the book value for each category i think that's actually the easiest way to to kind of see it it's nice for presentation purposes because then you can use this little collapse item to show just the book value or show the detail when needed on the profit and loss side we got the same type of thing with regards to depreciation expenses so do you want to record one depreciation expense for all categories and just group them all into one, which would be the easiest thing to do? Do you want to have different depreciation accounts to record depreciation separately for different types of categories of fixed assets? That's what we did. If you do that, then you could add a parent account, depreciation expense, subsidiary accounts below them for the categories of depreciation. That's what we have here. To see that, let's go to the lists drop down, chart of accounts. And you could see these subcategorizations for the um, for the assets under fixed asset accounts, and the subcategorization we did for the depreciation expense. So we're gonna record this basically with two journal entries, and we'll record the depreciation expense by category. Each journal entry is, is the same for depreciation expense recording, which is debit depreciation expense and credit accumulated depreciation. So you could do that with a journal entry, which would be the traditional way, which would you go to company, make journal entry. Now, these are very small accounts. So, I mean, there's only two, two accounts for each one we will do. So we could use the register. So I'm going to practice using the register. QuickBooks will see them the same no matter what we do either way. It's basically a journal entry transaction that we will put in place. So I'm going to start. Let's actually start with the um, equipment. I'm going to go into the accumulated depreciation because I can't go into depreciation expense. There is no register related to it because it's an income statement account. So I will use the register for accumulated depreciation. Double clicking on that. Now, the thing that's confusing, I'm going to make the date 022821. Uh, the confusing thing about this is it's a contra asset account. So this is where the increase and decrease is kind of mess you up because uh you know what do you mean increase are you talking about an increase or decrease to total assets or to the to the uh, depreciation accumulated depreciation account in other words the accumulated depreciation account is is a credit balance account here uh, and it's going to go up in the credit direction that's it so it's going to increase but it's going to decrease the the total assets and it's in the asset category so i would think if it was an it, it should be an increase but i think QuickBooks will actually say it should be a decrease. So this is where debits and credits are actually more clear than the increase or decrease. 
So I'm going to record it what I would assume it to be as an as an increase uh, here. So I'm going to record this transaction, which which is a credit, which would increase the contra asset account. If it's going the wrong way, I'll be able to see that, and I'll come back in and I'll and I'll adjust it. So we're at the one three eight eighty three. So I'm going to say it's going to be the I'm going to say increase one three eight point eight three. The other side's going to go to the depreciation expense, and I want to pick it up for the equipment. And then in the memo, I'm just going to call it an adjusting entry. You might want more detail than that. That's all I'm going to put here. I'm also going to use the split item down below so I can show that on both lines, both accounts. Adjusting entry. So there we have it. Let's go ahead and record it. Then if I double click on this journal entry, I can see the, the journal entry that's been created. So it wasn't a form that was used. It was a journal entry. You still have the debits and credits. And if I look at it now, it is backwards, right? Because that's, it should be a debit to depreciation expense. So again, the, the, the system is getting, a, it's kind of reversed. You don't know if it's increasing or decreasing because it's a contra asset account. I want to go to the financials to see that, and then I'll come back and fix it. So I'm going to close it back up. I'm going to close it back up. I'm going to go to the balance sheet and I'm going to say, okay, th did this work? And I say, no, it didn't work. Why? Because it increased the, the balance down here. It should be decreasing it. So it went the wrong way. If I go to the profit and loss, I'll see the expense and it's a negative expense. That doesn't make sense. It went the wrong way. So I'm going to go back in there and fix it. So I'm going to double click on it and I'm going to double click on the journal entry here. And then it takes me to the register so I could fix it here. It, instead of an increase, I'm going to make it a decrease, 138.83. And then I'll record it and say, yes, save the change. And then I'll double click on the journal entry and see if it's going the right way now. So now we have the uh, accumulated depreciation as a credit. It, normally the debit would be on top, but we're in the register for accumulated depreciation. So they put that on top. But it's a credit to the accumulated and depreciation expense debited. That matches what we would expect in our journal entry here. It's just reverse debit on top and whatnot. So I'm going to close this back out. It works. It looks good. Closing that back out. And now we see the depreciation expense under the subcategory has now appeared. And it's a positive number as it should be. And the balance sheet we see then is at the 5000 minus the 138.83 gives us the book value of the 4,861.17. If I go to Excel, we say, okay, does that make sense over here? If I subtract these two out, 4,861.17. If I go to my, my worksheet that I might get from my tax preparer, you're gonna say, uh, and remember, I won't do the calculation again. We did it last time, but this is for the year. You'd have to break it down to the two month time period we're talking about, plus the prior year accumulated uh, depreciation. So take a look at the prior presentation to get back to this worksheet and see how we got to this this journal entry all right now we'll do this the same journal entry for the second one over here we're gonna do the same journal entry for the second one i'm gonna go all right so let's go back to our chart of accounts and this time i want to go into the furniture uh furniture accumulated depreciation account and we're going to record it as a decrease this time because that's the way it goes even though that's weird so that's 233.5. So I'm going to say this is uh, 2333.5. And the other side is going to go to depreciation, but make sure I'm going to the furniture. The memo, I'm just going to put adjusting entry to say it's an adjusting entry. I like to use the split down here to then put a memo on both sides of the adjustment. So adjusting entry. And so then I'm going to say, okay, record that. Double click on this. I'll double check the journal entry. Close this back out. So now I see it's a credit to accumulated depreciation, debit to depreciation expense. That's what we have here. Looks good. Let's close this out. Let's close this out. And then I'll close this out. And so now on the balance sheet, we're on the balance sheet, furniture and fixture. We've got the 98,000 and the depreciation, accumulated depreciations at 9,833.50. Is that where we are in the Excel worksheet? I can tie it into the Excel worksheet 983350. You can tie it into this worksheet too. Look at the prior presentation to do that. If I go back on over and I double click on that uh, accumulated depreciation account, then we see the detail. There's our transactions. There's what was recorded prior to this year. Closing this back out, if we go then to the income statement, now we've got these two categories. There's the furniture accumulated or depreciation expense, double clicking on that. 
there's the transaction. It is a journal entry. Closing that back out, we have this nice little, these are two sub accounts. So we could collapse the sub account categorization and show just depreciation expense as one line item. If I expand this again, note that you could just, because they're sub accounts, name this equipment and furniture under the sub account of depreciation expense. However, because that, that'll, because additive to say depreciation expense. However, if you do that, then when you, when you type in equipment or furniture, you might get it confused with the furniture and equipment account that is the asset account. And you'll have to look at the account type in order to make sure that you don't mix those two things up, either an expense account that you're trying to hit or the asset account. That's why I do the repetition here for myself. And then if I want to present it, maybe just present it as a uh, collapsed column so I can have it all collapsed in one area. So bottom line, if I, if I then take a look at the net income, we're at the 6,073.18, 6,073.18. ,073 if I go back to our uh, Excel worksheet, we're going to say there's that tie out down here. Yeah, it's 6,076. Let's do that one more time. It's 607618, 607617. It's off by a dollar. That's rounding. I'm okay with that. There's no reversing entry that's going to happen. This is a permanent difference. So there's no change, uh, no reversal is going to happen for, for the depreciation. So let's just take a look at where we stand. If you're following along, this is where we stand in terms of the balance sheet. So you can check your numbers out at this point. There's where we are on the profit and loss. Here's where we are with the P and L, the profit and loss at this point. And let's look at the trial balance, which is probably the easiest thing to check under the reports, accounting and taxes. We'll take a look at the trial balance, the good old TB, 010121 to 022821. There's our trial balance at this point in time.